And we're back with some more Pittsburgh Penguins historical challenge in the year 1984. We are 11 and 10 currently, so let's continue on with the season one simulation. Well, we're on December 31st, and I think it is pretty apparent that, as we've seen before, our main problem is with goals against per game. Second to last in the league with a 4.35. I mean, luckily our goals four has been up there with a 4.53, so it's sort of counteracting that but it's definitely not Stanley Cup winning numbers. But our penalty kill is actually pretty good compared to the rest of the league anyway. We're third in the league with a 79.3, and the power play is seventh with a 26.3. So if we could just clean up our five-on-five five goals against, then we should be pretty good. And when you take a look at our defensive core, there's no one who's really fantastic defensively, whereas you look at other teams' defensive cores, you got guys who are in the 80s, sometimes even 90s defensively for the defensive grade. We need to get ourselves one of those kinds of players. Unfortunately, there are zero defensemen on the trade block that I'm interested in. And coincidentally, there are also zero forwards on the trade block that I am interested in. I mean, there's maybe a couple of <laughs> one and a half star ability players there in Hottam. And let's see who else. There's Gorantz, but nothing that would really be an improvement of any kind. Luckily, we do have Mario Lemieux back. He has 19 points in 11 games played. But obviously that hasn't been enough. Yeah, I mean, we need better defense. There's no question about it. We probably have one of the worst defensive cores in the league as far as defensive grade goes. So we, we need to improve there for sure. I don't know if that has anything to do with our coach, Richard Hensick, because he's very offensive preference. Yeah, that's probably it, to be honest. We might have to get ourselves a new coach. The problem is there wasn't any defensive coach in free agency who I was interested in, so... I doubt that's changed at this point. We're gonna have to wait for the year to roll over, right? And see what the draft brings us, see what free agency brings us as far as new coaches. And we just gotta roll with it this year, I think, and <laughs> just hope for the best. Because, I mean, obviously we're not in a good position, but we are in the playoff spot as of right now. So hopefully we can manage to maintain that. But with that being said, I think we will continue to advance at least to the trade deadline. All right, so we're on February 3rd here. We are currently sitting outside the playoffs, so things have gotten pretty nasty as of late. We had a 7-3 win yesterday against the Islanders, but a lot of ugly losses in January in particular, starting from Edmonton until all the way to the end of the month against Toronto. We won one game against Washington, that's it. And that definitely played a huge role in getting us to where we are now, which is not a good place. So what I've done, I've managed to get two trades accepted with the Washington Capitals and the New York Rangers. The first, Ron Flockhart and a fifth round pick in this year's draft to Washington in exchange for the 29-year-old center Doug Jarvis. He is a very defensive-minded center, four-star ability, only 28 points on the season, so he's not really much for offense, but he looks like he is going to provide defensively as we see by his defensive grade. Yeah, he's got a 73 defensive grade on the Washington Capitals, who are 23, 23, and 6. I'm guessing they're looking to get younger. They're looking to get some draft picks in there. A the complete trade. There you go. Doug Jarvis, now a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And now a trade with the New York Rangers. We are going to be sending the 27-year-old center, Mark Taylor, and a 12th round pick in this year's draft to the Rangers for the 28-year-old defenseman, Dave Maloney. He is a two-and-a-half star ability defensive defenseman, as we see by his defensive grade, 84 on the 18, 26, and 7 New York Rangers. So I figured that defensive grade has to at least partially hold up here, right? Even on an offensively-based team. So Mark Taylor and a 12th for Dave Maloney. Complete trade. I mean, Mark Taylor's good. Don't get me wrong. He's a three-star ability. But the thing about Taylor is he was only playing, I believe, fourth-line minutes on this team, just given how much depth we have at center. And he's more of an offensively-based player, so I felt like getting someone like Jarvis to replace him would make a lot of sense. And then obviously we needed a lot of help on defense regardless, because if we take a look at our roster without Maloney, we got one three-and-a-half-star guy in Mantha, and that's basically it. Everyone after that is not exactly NHL caliber, so that was definitely a needed trade for Dave Maloney. And we'll see where those two trades can take us. I think I'm going to send Charles Wood down. He's only a one-star ability. Anyway, I think we can move on with the simulation. And we'll see what our trades for Jarvis and Maloney do for us. All right. So we have finished the season 40-39-1. and one, Good enough for sixth in the conference. We have made the playoffs. But we're definitely far from an ideal team, as we see by our team statistics. We are one of the best goal-scoring teams in the league with a 4.46. But we also have one of the worst goals against per game in the league with a 4.34. Power play is good. Penalty kill is great. We're actually first in the league for the penalty kill. So if, if we can just clean up five on five defense, then 
all would be well. But unfortunately, that seems to be quite the task for this team as we, we have an offensively based coach who does not like physicality. And in fact, when I was looking at free agency for all the available staff members, there are only three coaches total who have defensive minded tactics. There is this guy who's not very good with player management or a lot of things, really. Defensive skills in particular at three as a defensive coach. Then you have Frank Edels, who is just literal garbage, who is supposedly a head coach. And then you have Brandon Koch, who, once again, defensive skills at three, player management at six, coaching defense at five. It's just, <laughs> it's, there's no good defensive coaches on the market. It wouldn't surprise me if the scouts here have better coaching defensive coaching ratings than the actual coaches themselves like ted harris for example 15 coaching defense <laughs> 10 defensive skills so it's just, eh. but this is my point this is why i hired richard hensick as the head coach because I, I literally could not find any coach that was to my liking so once the year rolls over to july 1st i definitely have to take another look at the coaching market and see what's out there because un unless we win the stanley cup then by all means i'll keep him but <laughs> cer certainly a very offensive run and gun team here that we have and i mean that's not the worst thing in the world with guys like me lemieux and bullard but you know we we suffer big time on the defensive side of the game as seen by our team stats and of course doesn't help that we don't have a phenomenal goaltender really there's no winning defensively on this team it's it's offense or bust <laughs> essentially looks like even maloney's defensive grade might have taken a hit while he's been with us he's at a 59 total grade obviously that's just during his time with us because his grade for the season is 64 but oh man we we have quite the task ahead of us if we intend on winning the stanley cup here i i mean apparently Richard Hensick's up for the coach of the year. I don't know why, but he is. So there you go. I mean, I, I'm sitting here talking about firing the guy and the game's just like, no, coach of the year material. <laughs> Let's check out the stats for the season. You have 116 points for Bullard, 103 for Babic, 90 for Young, 87 for Mantha, 81 for Lemieux in just 53 games, 50 for Bodger, 48 for Shedden, 46 for Hannon, 44 for Jarvis. How many of those were with us? 16, 39 for Kehoe, 39 for Rulston. 37 for Aries, so obviously no trouble scoring, but, you know, never exactly been our issue in the first place. Carlson with 36, 34 for Hamilton, 30 for Boutet, 28 for Buskis, 26 for Maloney, 24 for Hillier, 12 for Semenenko, and Maxwell, 2 for Loney and McSorley. And then I don't even want to see the goalie stat. Yeah, that, no, no thanks. <laughs> and we'll be facing the Philadelphia Flyers. They were 45, 30, and 5 on the regular season. They got quite the roster here. Lindbergh, Howe. Prop care. So here we go. Game number one will be a five to three Philadelphia victory. Shots at 37 to 33 in favor of Philly. Three stars of the game Sinisalo, Hillier, and Suter or Sutter. So, first period, we actually got off to a three nothing lead to start out. Rulston, Bullard, and Hannon with the goals for us. But then it's four in a row in the second period for Philly. And then Young to put the nail in the coffin in the third on the power play with two seconds left nonetheless and it doesn't even look like that was an empty netter and that will be a game one loss for your pittsburgh penguins and it looks like this might be a best of three series in fact because i'm only seeing three on the schedule there yeah this is a best of three there's only five games for each series here so that makes this a pretty crucial game number two we gotta win this come on pittsburgh oh man two to one philadelphia victory shots are 32 to 30 in favor of philly three stars of the game crossman young and craven yeah, not looking good. So we have to step it up here in game number three. Elimination game number three. First period underway. Oh boy, Brian Propp from Poulon and Kerr gets Philly on the board early. And there's another one. Brian Propp from Poulon makes it 2-0. All right, there's, an, there's one for us. Babic with the goal from Lemieux and Young makes it 2-1. And in the second period, down by one. There's one for Poulon from Renault and Crossman, and we are down by two. Oh, all right, Bob Airy with the goal from Loney and Jarvis. Keeping it interesting, heading to the third period. There you go, Rick Kehoe from Bullard and Mantha. Oh, but Tim Kerr with a goal makes it 4-3, to three, roughly halfway through the third. But there's one from Hannon from Maxwell and Bullard. 4-4, four, four. Oh, Brad McCrimmon with the goal makes it 5-4 Philly from Sutter and Sutter. Didn't realize they had two Sutters on the team. <laughs> oh, but wait a minute. Bob Airy with his second of the game from Carlson and Rulston makes it 5-5. Five to five. This is back and forth here. Oh, 6-5 Dave Hannon from Kehoe and Bullard. How will this finish? A 7-5, Wayne Babbock from Young and Maxwell. And that is all she wrote for this pretty intense game number three. Shots of 55-47 in favor of Pittsburgh. Three-star of the game, Bullard 
Pulan and Hannon. All right, here we go. Game number four. Also an elimination game. Can we send it to game five? All right, there's one from Mary Lemieux from Young and Semenko. We're up one nothing. Come on, Pittsburgh. There it is. Hillier from Rulston and Jarvis. We're up two nothing. There's another one. Jarvis from Carlson and Airy. Up three nothing. There's four. You aren't young. We're. It looks like as of right now, we're pushing a game number five here. Oh, wait a minute. Pull on for Philly. Makes it four to one. But there's Mo Mantha from Babak and Young makes it five to one. There's Crossman for Philly, makes it five to two. Third period now. Oh, Brian Prop makes it five to three. Oh, five to four, Dave Polon, hold on, we got a game here. Six to four, Rick Kehoe from Bullard and Hillier with 48 seconds left and we are headed to a game five, very nice. Shots of 35 to 33 in favor of Pittsburgh, three stars of the game, Young, Sutter, and Jarvis. All right, here we go, game number five. Whoever wins this is moving on to round number two. Come on, Pittsburgh. Oh, goal for them. Crossman with the goal. Makes it one nothing. And two nothing. Brian Prop. Come on, Pittsburgh. Second period underway. There it is. Bullard from Carlson and Rulston. Oh, but there's three to one. Sinisalo with the goal from Renault and Suter. Ugh. Ron Sutter with the goal. With one second left. It's not looking good. We need a huge comeback in the third. Oh, Mo Mantha. All right, he's getting it started. Oh, man. Not looking good. Yep. Allison with the goal from Carson and Dore makes it five to two. And that is it for the series and these playoffs. And we're going to have some pretty big changes to make in the offseason if this playoff run and this season in general is anything to go by. Shots were 46 to 32 in favor of Philadelphia. Three stars of the game Craven, Allison, and Renault. So the main change I think we got to make is obviously the head coach. I just, the, the problem is, I just don't know what staff member out there. It's going to be a suitable replacement. We have to hope that some team fires their coach who ends up being a good defensive coach or, or even just a good standard coach. I don't, I don't care if it's defensive in particular. Just give me a good coach in general because Richard Hansick, the preference is just the, the very non, especially the very non-physical preferences was killing us this year. I guarantee you the, the only uh, to be honest, the only reason I hired him was because of his 19 tactics and then respectable player management, motivation and discipline. I wasn't even looking at his coaching ratings over here because this mostly just has to do with player development to my understanding. It's this side you're really looking at for actually coaching the games and that 19 tactics look pretty good. So I figured why not? We'll tr give it a try, but clearly it didn't work. So we got to move on from Richard Hansick. I think <laughs> despite being a uh, apparently a coach of the year candidate here with the Jack Adams. I mean, he's, he's listed, he's there, but it's, <laughs> I don't think he's going to win it. Even if he does win it, I, I can't see myself hanging on to him because it's just not going to work with how things played out this year. In all honesty, I might have better luck coaching the team myself. <laughs> I don't really want to do that, but I will if I have to, if I can't find anybody else better. Even despite my low coaching ratings, at least I, I'm, I don't have a very non-physical physical preference and then uh, offensive preference that leaves defense wide open so i mean again that's last resort like that's that's absolute last resort is me filling in for the head coach but i i can't see richard hansick sticking around for next season because the the defensive performance was just horrid this year and with that being said we do have some players to re-sign uh, quite a few actually bullard jarvis mantha hannon young Shedden. Babic, all need to be reassigned. All players who I want back. So Bullard, gonna start with you. Doesn't look like we need to do much negotiating here. Hooray for the non-salary cap era. Dave Hannon, there you go. Mantha, looks like all these guys are gonna sign. Got Doug Shedden and Warren Young. There you go. All right, all of them should sign. I may as well get the two-star players back as well. Semenko actually did pretty well defensively. 78 defensive grade. <laughs> That honestly, that might have been the best defensive grade on the team now that I think of it. So, yeah, I'll definitely re sign him. There you go. Looks like everybody of importance has signed. So, with that, let's advance to the end of the playoffs. And your Stanley Cup champions are the Edmonton Oilers. Not really a surprise given, you know, Gretzky, Coffee, Fuhr, all those guys. I must have accidentally simmed ahead of the awards as we got the <laughs> awards in the notification center here. So, Gretzky wins the hearts, Coffee wins the con Smythe. Bob Fraze wins the Vesna, Paul Coffey wins the Norris, Mario Lemieux wins the Calder, GM of the Year goes to McNabb, Rick Meager wins the Selkie, Gretzky wins the Maurice Richard, Gretzky wins the Art Ross, plus minus award goes to Lowe of the Oilers, the Saving Grace Award goes to Bob Fraze, Moog wins the Jennings Trophy, McNabb wins the Lady Bing, 
Sutter wins the Bill Masterton, Jobert Perot wins the Mark Messier Leadership Award, Wayne Gretzky wins the Ted Lindsay, and Doug Carpenter wins the Jack Adams. All right, so the season summary, we got three positive categories. We reached the playoffs, had a winning season, and we met our objective. Our total season score is 20, total career score also, of course, 20. I mean, honestly, I'm tempted to put some of these available points into coaching, <laughs> just, just, just in case, just in case I need them in the immediate future. I'm going to put a couple into negotiating at least, then I might go, yeah, I'm going to go two into tactics. <laughs> honestly, I've, I've never done that before. I usually just focus on GM ratings until I'm maxed out there. But unfortunately, with the situation the way it is, with there being very few coaches that I am impressed by. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's looking like I might be the coach this year. Obviously, I'll wait for the year to roll over to July 1st, and I'll take a look. I'll take a real good look for the coaches to see what's out there. But there is a possibility that I might be coaching this year. So, Boutet retires. Kehoe also retires. Maloney retires. What? He was only 28. <laughs> oh, man. That's... Yeah, that, that is unfortunate. I didn't think he was going to retire this year. That's unfortunate. Rick Kehoe was 33. Boutet was 33. So those guys are understandable, but Maloney at 28? Really? Ugh. That sucks. Was kind of hoping he would stick around for longer, you know? All right, let's take a look at free agency here. You got Chevrier in goal. I might have to go for him, honestly, just given our situation with Heron and Romano. Neither of them impressed me last year. Obviously, I know defense isn't our strong suit, but we could use a goaltender like Chevrier. He had an 889 last year in the AHL, 22 wins. I'll take a chance. I mean, assuming he's not an RFA. Oh, he's an RFA. <laughs> But even so, I, I might just want to go after him regardless. Who has his rights? Free agent? He was listed. Yeah, he's listed as an RFA, but it says that no one has his rights. So that's interesting. I wonder if that's a, a glitch there. I will offer him a contract. 225000 for three years. Sounds good to me. And there's not really much else. There's Norm DuPont, two-star ability. Ugh, it's the, it's the same personality from the previous challenge with Nashville. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> There's never any drama surrounding him, but rarely reacts well when things don't go his way. Oh man, it's that same personality archetype that we saw so often in the Nashville <laughs> challenge. And actually, I, I didn't even check Chevrier. All right, his, his personality is, looks like it's all right. Yeah, it's not the worst. That's, that's a pretty good personality, actually. Besides moving around more than average, but still, you know, we, we got him locked up for three years, assuming he signs, so I'm not concerned about that. The, the GM mode's over in 88, 89 anyway. But let's take a look at some other players that we have fully scouted here. Like, let's see if that same personality is, yeah. Chris Valentine, Eric Calder. All right, so he's not, he doesn't have that personality, but he's, he's a half-star ability. Claude LaRose has that same personality. There's Adam Oates, one-star ability, three-and-a-half-star potential. I mean, he's good offensively, but that's not what we're looking for, right? <laughs> <laughs> we want defense. Maybe some other team who needs a center will have him on the first line center or something and he'll just grow up to be a three and a half star ability player in no time, but he wouldn't he wouldn't have that opportunity here, so I'm just going to ignore him. Man, there's really nothing in free agency. There's the, besides Chevrolet and DuPont who uh, I'm not a fan of personality-wise, uh, there's really nothing. So we have to hope Chevrolet signs cuz he's clearly the <laughs> crowning gem of free agency. I suppose it's time to focus our efforts on finding a new coach. So it looks like there's a lot more options here. Defense, okay. So you got defensive but non-physical as his preference. I don't like that. I want defensive and at least standard for physical preferences. Defensive but very non-physical. Defensive, non-physical. Defensive, very non-physical. <laughs> what is it with these coaches and the historical GMOs that... Oh man, defensive, non-physical. Defensive, balanced but... Awful ratings. <laughs> Standard, very non-physical. Has some good ratings in there besides discipline at zero, but uh, I don't think he's a... Standard, very non-physical. Standard, very non-physical. Uh, honestly, we might not find anybody who has anything outside of non-physical. <laughs> That's what I'm starting to see here. Oh, ooh, Herb Brooks. Okay. It appears he was fired by... What team was he with? The Rangers. Yeah, he was fired by the Rangers. They went 25, 46, and 10. Yeah, there's no competition. This, Herb Brooks is the best coach I've seen so far. And honestly, I don't think we're going to find anything better. So, Richard Hansick, fire you. 
And Herb Brooks, I need you to pull off a miracle here. I'll give you three seasons. And there it is. Herb Brooks is officially the head coach of your Pittsburgh Penguins. Hopefully things turn out a little bit better this year with him at the helm. And we're also going to need a miracle to whip up a decent defensive core. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's there's nothing in free agency, so we're going to have to rely on trades in the draft here. We're all right at forwards still. We could use some depth, but defensively, we just got nothing. We have Mo Mantha, that's about it. <laughs> Mo Mantha and then Doug Bodger, who's 19 years of age, still developing. Yeah, this is a tough build here. This is a tough team to build. I mean, there's Randy Hillier still who we could go after. I, I suppose we're going to have to. It's not like there's really anybody else better. We have Normark in the minors. There's also Charlesworth, but again, those guys just not too impressive with their overall ability in general. Not to mention Normark's personality issue. <laughs> he's got he's got that same personality that like half the players in this game have, seemingly. So we'll see what happens with Chevrolet and Hillier. And then we're gonna get to the draft on the third. Alright, so we're at the drafts. Where are we picking? Twelfth. Right, that's not bad. Especially considering the amount of potential players on the board this year. So here we go. Sim until you your pick. Who is on the board? You have Ed Belfour available. He's supposed to be picked at number two. We have no information available on him, but might be worth it. Might be worth taking. There's also Frederick Olsen. There's Mark Tenorti. Randy Burge. Ooh, Randy Burge is NHL ready. Right out of the gate. He's a forward, but pff, I mean, he's he's a real good one. He's supposed to go at 30 according to the draft rankings, but I don't buy that. I, I don't buy that at all. I think he, he might very well go next pick if I don't take him. Yeah, in terms of NHL readiness, he was definitely the best. Uh, ooh, Dana Merzen, also NHL ready. Very good defensive category. Okay, I think he might have just taken the top spot. He's ranked at 19, 21, and 22 apparently. So he's ranked at three different spots. All at once. Decent personality. He's got a temper that sometimes gets the best of him, but that's fine. That's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I think if we could take Merzen, Burridge, and Belfour back to back to back, if I could make a trade for the 13th and 14th overall picks from Washington and LA, we might be in business here. That's easier said than done, obviously, but I'm going to try because I, I want all three of them. So Hamilton, Romano, and a second to LA for their first would work. Now, what if I could get Washington's as well? Belange, next year's second, and next year's third would work. I could make both these trades work. And to be honest, Belanger wasn't too impressive last year. He spent most of his time in the AHL. He was good there, but when he was in the NHL, not very good. And we could improve right away by getting someone like, oh, I forget his name, but it, he, he was he was a two-star forward. So it, was, it would be immediate improvement over Belanger. And then there's also a two-star defenseman, and then not to mention Belfour. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Offer trade. Boom, finalize. And then LA, what was it again? It was a second, Romano and Hamilton, right? In exchange for LA's first offer, finalize. There it is. So we now have three first round picks in a row and I know exactly who we're taking with each of them. So for our first pick, we'll be taking Ed Belfour. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Penguins. And with our next pick, we'll be taking Randy Burge. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Penguins. With our next pick, we will be taking... Dana Merzen, welcome to the Pittsburgh Penguins. So there you go, three picks in a row, and we're looking pretty good for this draft already. I mean, Merzen and Burge are definitely going to be able to play right out of the draft. Like, there's no question they're already... <laughs> Merzen is already second on our depth chart for defensemen, and then Burge is already fourth for left-wingers. Yeah, there's no, there's no question. They can, they're ready this year. Now, obviously, as a half-star ability, I don't think Belfour is going to be able to play this year, but... Just given that he's 20 years of age, four and a half star potential, I couldn't pass up on that. So definitely a good guy to have in the system. And let's continue the draft here. So it seems that the only players of note really <laughs> that are left are goaltenders. There are a couple of skaters in Fedek and Stillman. But as far as two star potentials go, that is about it. <laughs> There's also these two and a half star potentials up here. who are also goaltenders. So I guess we're taking another goaltender here. Unless something stands out about Fedek or Stillman, which not exactly. Oh, and here's a look at Burge's personality. Stays out of trouble off the ice, so that's good. Merzen's personality. All right, that's good. That's a good personality. And then Belfort, we don't know. So overall, solid draft, regardless of what happens from here on out. So I think we're just going to sim the rest of the draft here. All right, that's done. Now let's sign Burge and Merzen because they can definitely play this year. Oh, there we go. New achievement. Game 54. Draft a player with the 54th overall pick in any draft. I'm surprised I've never gotten that one before. <laughs> All right, so in goal, we have Chevrier and Heron. 
On defense, we have Mantha, Merzen, Carlson, Hillier, Bodger, Buskus, and McSorley. Looking pretty rough <laughs> for the most part, besides Mantha and Merzen. Forward's looking much better. I'll send down Kevin Stevens. I think I'm going to call up McBain. I'm going to see what he's about at the NHL level this year. Then I may as well call up Tekin, and it looks like he's gotten down in potential. So I wonder if that has to do with him apparently being at the wrong level. I, I don't see that, but I guess may as well try. And obviously there's basically no one in free agency who we've seen up to this point. I'll take a look around the league for a possible defenseman we could trade for. But honestly, though, I'd rather wait to do that until the regular season starts just to see what everyone's defensive grades are looking like. Since obviously we have a new coach, things are going to be much different. I would hope <laughs> in terms of defensive simulating. So I want to get an idea of who's going to be able to play in Brooks system and who's not. So with that, I think we'll end things off here. And then the next one, we will get started with the year number two simulation. See you guys then.